And good evening. Thanks for joining us. It was the most violent attack on the U.S. Capitol in more than 200 years. And tonight, a House committee will lay out its initial findings in vivid detail to the public. Tonight's hearing expected to be an opening statement of sorts, the first in a series of of at least seven hearings intended to show how President Donald Trump's repeated false claims of voter fraud laid the foundation for the deadly assault. Now, more than 860 people have been charged in the Capitol riots, some of them from right here in our own backyard. So tonight, we are learning the list of Wisconsinites charged has grown from six to eight. Rebecca Clough goes in depth on where those cases stand now. It's been almost a year and a half since the U.S. Capitol was attacked and arrests are still happening. The retired head of the ATF in Milwaukee and former federal agent Joel Lee says this case is important for the country and needs this type of thorough investigation. Peaceful protests is encouraged. It is the American way. Um, but from the other side of the spectrum, seditious activity cannot be tolerated. Court records show federal agents arrested Riley Casper, who says he's a farmer from Green Bay back in March. He faces some of the most serious charges, including assaulting officers using a deadly weapon and acts of physical violence in the Capitol. Court records show he sent multiple text messages admitting to hurting police officers. In one text saying he pepper sprayed three cops. And in another message he wrote, we're beating cops with fence panels and pulling their helmets and radios off of them and yanking them from their line into the crowd and just shoving him around between people so much he can't expletive stand up. Another arrest happened last month. Conlin Weir from Plover is charged in part with disorderly conduct and a restricted building. Court records show pictures of Weir walking around the Capitol with his cell phone raised as if he's recording. Not much information has been released about what Weir was doing in the Capitol other than he, quote, engaged in disorderly and disruptive conduct. Despite these two arrests coming more than a year after the attacks, Lee says that isn't long when you consider the thousands of hours of evidence federal investigators are digging through. I certainly don't think that um, a year and a half is, uh, is, is too long. And when you add the scope of the case, then I would say that it, it is not a long time. I think it is the a right time because the one thing that the investigation must be is it must be thorough and it must be accurate. Another Wisconsin man charged was Michael Fitzgerald from Janesville. He pleaded not guilty and is awaiting trial. According to court documents, Fitzgerald was near the front of the line of rioters, participating in the push against law enforcement officers. Five other men from Wisconsin have admitted to their roles in the Capitol attacks. Joshua Munn is awaiting sentencing. Kevin Loftus, Abram Markovsky, and Brandon Nelson were sentenced to two to three years probation plus fines. The only person to serve time so far is David Mish Jr. from West Allis. Court records say he told investigators, I was with a group of guys. Everybody was yelling, breach the building. Mish was sentenced to 30 days in jail. Lee says it's likely the number of arrests from Wisconsin will continue to grow and the investigation will go on as long as the statute of limitations allows. Reporting in Milwaukee, Rebecca Clough, TMJ4 News. And we will air the special coverage of this first public hearing on the June, January 6th, excuse me, insurrection. Lester Holt will anchor live coverage starting at 7.